Hello, everyone, and welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis, and with me, as always, is June Liu. How you doing, June? I'm good. Enjoying a cool Northern California day. Evening. Yes. Rather. Very nice. It's been warm the last few days, but tonight, tonight's been pretty cool. Nice breeze, so. Yeah. Good shape. So today we are talking about the uh, Foundation Charter Oak Connecticut Shade Rothschild. And uh, this is a short Robusto, so four and a half inches by 50 ring gauge. Uh, and this comes out of the Tabacalera Fernandez factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper is US Connecticut Shade. Binder is Sumatra. Filler is Nicaragua. Uh, blended by Nick Molillo. Molillo, sorry. Uh, price point's five bucks. Uh, this was released, just released at the IPCPR trade show here in July 2016. Uh, so with that being said, let's kind of jump into uh, our initial thoughts on the pre-light experience. So June, what was your pre-light experience like? Yep. Uh, so first when I read that, it was uh, U.S. Connecticut shade. Um, I, was, uh, I, I'm, I was curious what that was going to taste like. Um, I don't think I've smoked many U.S. Connecticut shades. Have you? Mm. Uh, I've smoked a few, yeah. Oh. Like what? What other ones are there out there? Like all I can really think about that I've had, anyways, that my father won. Uh huh. Uh, that H two K something something that that one with like some skew number looking thing. It was like the hybrid one, yeah. Yeah, but um, off the anyway, top of my head, uh, I'm not recalling the them, but no. Anyways, I don't get to smoke a lot of them. Usually, you know, we're there, there's more Ecuadorian Connecticut shades right. out there, but uh, nonetheless, I was excited to see what it was all about. So. Um, in terms of the look of the cigar, um, it had a very silky smooth Colorado Claro wrapper on it. I uh, thought that the veins were well pressed, the seams were pretty tight, um, and the, the bunching feels like it had uh, no issues because you know I didn't feel any soft spots and it had like a uniform, you know, uh, a, a semi spongy give to it. Um, the head has a really nice, neatly applied triple cap, um, pre light. Aromas, uh, wrapper aromas. I got a lot of fresh barnyard, um, like a nose tingling white pepper and cedar. Um, smelling that foot, I got it, it was pretty muted because that the foot was enclosed with the wrapper. So um, I mainly just got some cedar and white pepper out of it. Um, faint notes of those. Mm -hmm. And on the cold draw, uh, dry cardboard cedar uh, and, and that same white pepper spice. What about you? Uh, yeah, the, a wrapper was really light tan. Uh, it was a patchwork of veins, uh, a few lumps and bumps on it. Uh, the seams were fairly visible, but they were smooth. Uh, there were two caps that I saw. Um, one extended like really far down the shoulder, and then the second one was just kind of like a, a very s small one because the cap on mine was like flat. Uh, but I looked at the pictures that you had, and yours looks like your, yours had a, a more rounded head on it. So mine was very mine was very flat, and the the little piece of um, wrapper that was f covering that the flat top was a, a shade darker than the rest of the, the rest of the wrapper. So that was, I thought that was a little interesting um, close foot. So the excess wrapper is going over the, you know, folding over um, the bands fairly simple, uh, you know, glossy um, it's got the scar name and that large oak tree on it. So it's, you know, it's, it's a decent looking band. Um, the aroma I got from the wrapper was a uh, light hay uh, and the foot, even though it was, you know, covered, uh, it still let a little bit of um, sweetness um, that came out of it to go along with that light hay. And pre light draw was snug due to the close foot, um, but I was getting um, some light sweet hay and leather from there. Um, and I also got a nice uh, spicy tingle on my lips at that point. So getting into flavor, kind of first third to final third, what was your experience like? Um so when I first took the first draw, um, like right off the bat, I knew that this wasn't going to be that stereotypical mild, uh, run of the middle, uh, Connecticut shade cigar. Mm -hmm. Um, I got, I felt like there was quite a bit of full distinctive, you know, flavors going on in this one. Um, I got really great sweet and creamy bread, uh, got some floral perfume, roasted dry nuts and, and, uh, white pepper that was, uh, um, you know, that, that, that kind of made my lips and, and tongue kind of, uh, tingling, uh, a very quality rich cedar, uh, and, and some natural wood bitterness, um, through the nose, uh, it was very surprising through the nose. I got quite a bit of white pepper spice to the point that 
um, through the retro hell, it kind of made my nose kind of uh, sting a little bit, which mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever gotten out of uh, Connecticut Shade Wrappers. So, right, uh, and and it was it was a pleasantly good thing. I really dug that, um, and also got in conjunction to that white pepper through the retro uh, sweet bread and the uh, bitter roasted nuts. So really mm -hmm. enjoyable flavors that work really great in a harmonious fashion. Um, mm -hmm. Finished uh, consisted of a dry roasted bitter nuts and uh, light airy bread. Um, in terms of strength and body, uh, strength surprisingly was, I mean, it was still a medium, but it kind of made me feel like I was about to get to that medium full stage. Mm -hmm. um, but in, and body was medium. So, um, so, so that was the first third getting as a second third. Um, it's pretty in tune with the first third. Uh, still getting medium body flavors of a uh, sweet creamy bread, roasted dried nuts, uh, lip and tongue tingly white pepper spites, and that rich quality cedar. Um, but the floral perfume uh, becomes more of an intermittent, intermittent note instead of uh, where it was just kind of throughout the entire first third. Mm -hmm. um, and also that bitterness, uh, it's amp it's it, it definitely got kicked up at that point, but uh, it wasn't overbearing by any means. It, it really gave it that real, it rounded out to that cedar component uh, with that bitterness really well. Um, through the retro held second, third, still that same, you know, semi nose stinging white pepper spice. Uh, followed by the sweet bread and bitter roasted nuts. Uh, the finish is still the same, consisting of dry roasted nuts and uh, airy light bread. Um, in terms of strength, it was still medium, uh, trying to kind of edge into that medium full. And uh, the last third of it, uh, where it, it, the first third, uh, initially it mimicked the second third. Um, with that sweet creamy bread, roasted dried nuts, lip tingling, lip and tongue tingling white pepper spice, a pronounced bitterness and a rich quality cedar. Uh, through the nose, uh, still got that semi nose stinging white pepper, sweet bread, and the bitter roasted nuts. Um, and that finish was still dry roasted bitter nuts in an airy light bread. But halfway through that last third, uh, this I felt like this cigar perhaps started to show its youth, um, and the profile became. A lot bitter um, and at times it took over the other notes but I mean although it did that it wasn't like all I tested was bitterness so mm. uh, but, it, but it was still a good profile uh, and, and hopefully um, you know that'll you know with enough humor or time uh, it'll get remediated right um, so and then on conjunction to that, um, at the halfway mark, the draw started heating up a lot for me. Okay. Uh, and I started to taste like an ashy note. Um, but, you know, all make, making me think that, you know, uh, it, it's still not quite ready and, and needed a little bit more humor over time. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, for me, the initial draws, um, it was like a very spicy, uh, almost cinnamon cedar. And then um, that kind of went on for a while. I mean, a quarter inch in and the spicy cedar was still remaining. Um, the retro hell was like a dialed down version of that same profile. So um, it didn't really sting through the nose, but you knew that the, the spice was there. And then a half inch in, uh, the spice really mellowed out. Um, the cedar was still present, um, but the retro hell was more creamy and, and general woodiness. And then a few draws further in, um, in the mouth profile and the retrohale, um, they were the same creamy woodiness. So everything kind of, you know, became the same, uh, profile. And then, uh, nearing the end of the third, the creaminess went away and a slight char came in to take its place, uh, both in the mouth and on the retrohale. And, um, that's the strength in that first third was just, just a touch under, under medium for me. And then getting into the second third, um, that same charred wood, um, from the finish of the first third was how it began. And then a quarter inch in, uh, some of the creaminess came back and that mixed with that slightly charred wood. And then at, I'd say half inch in, um, the woodiness became more defined as oak. And then at an inch in, uh, the smoke became a bit drying and the creaminess was still remaining there. Um, but it didn't like add any kind of, uh, you know, saliva to the mouth. It was still, still dry at that point. And then nearing the end of the third, the oak became very toasty uh, in the mouth and on the retrohale. And the strength had kind of jumped up to the, uh, just above the side of medium. And then in the final third, um, that toasty oak was continuing on. 
Um, but there was a little uh, bit of minerality and uh, bitterness that joined the profile. And then uh, a half inch in the mineral minerality went away, but the bitterness um, stayed with the toasted oak. And then three quarters of an inch in, uh, some creaminess returned and that pushed out some of the bitterness. Uh, and then an inch in, the bitterness um, had completely gone away and there was a little bit of minerality that kind of came back in. And then as the cigar was wrapping up, um, the profile was just kind of creamy oak with a little bit of minerality to it. And the retrohale was like a smooth creamy oak. Um, and that the strength kind of stayed at that slightly above um, medium level. So um, getting into performance, uh, burn and draw, what was your experience like? Um, I thought the burn was really good. Uh, burn rate ash was fantastic. Um, ash just had on nice and tight, averaging about uh, one inch increments. Um, and the burn was fairly razor sharp uh, throughout the entire burn time and, uh, you know, never had a retouch up or uh, use my lighter in general. So mm -hmm. uh, the only reason why it wasn't amazing, which is the highest category, is because uh, I kind of wish, you know, that the, the the Instagrammer, perhaps, and me, and the picture-taking person <laughs> that we wanted to uh, have longer than a one-inch ash to hold. Right, right. Um, and that's just hard and harder to do with a shade wrapper, like Connecticut shade, especially. Right, right. Not like a hefty one, like a broadleaf. So yeah. Um, so uh, in terms of draw, uh, the, the draw was subpar. Uh, it was uh, surprisingly tight for the first two thirds. Um, and then even after I cut it to that very end of the cap, it was still really tight. Um, but when I, when I hit that last third, uh, the draw still was a little tight, but it opened up quite a bit. Um, so it, I assume that, you know, maybe uh, there were some stems in that area that got really, you know, bunched together tight um, and then had that airflow in there. So, mm -hmm. uh, which is surprising in general because the, the quality of control at AJ's factory is it's pretty good, and and uh, this is definitely seems like an anomaly. So, what about you? Yeah, the burn for mine was fantastic. I mean, it was razor sharp burn line, and for me, the first ash didn't drop until two inches in. Um, but then after that, it was um, kind of dropping off in the in the one inch segments that you that you were seeing as well. So I thought it was fantastic. Uh, draw was slightly tighter than I prefer, but still very good. Um, and then based on the flatness of the head on my sample, I would. I recommend um, punching it um, kind of almost similar to like the CAO flathead, how it's really, really, you know, very tight edges on it. Um, you have to be very careful if you're going to use a guillotine on it, just because if you go too far, you're going to go pa completely past that first cap and then you're into that second cap and then you may be in trouble. But um, other than that, it was, a, it was a really good draw for me. So overall, what were your thoughts on this cigar? Um, you know, the, the milder, smoker in me uh some of that enjoys you know very full distinctive flavors without a lot of strength most of the time i'm smoking mm -hmm. um you know always want to search out for that next uh that next cigar that fits that profile so i think i may have just found that uh, um you know the underground shade has been a long time favorite of mine since they came out especially the robusto size but you know this cigar may have topped that um uh, I mean, granted, you know, within the other Connecticut shade wrappers that's been out, we've yet to review it yet, uh, such as that Illusioni, uh, you know, Rothschild Connecticut one, like Sarcofolium has one, uh, uh, like, uh, and these are the ones that I'm looking forward to. I know there's a lot out there. Uh, and then, um, like, the, the Casa Frenetis Agonorsa Leaf Connecticut as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I haven't smoked those yet, uh, and, and we haven't reviewed those yet, so... Um, still want to smoke those before I, you know, rank that. Um, perhaps that's something that we could do uh, at, at year's end. Um, right, yeah. But, uh, I mean, nonetheless, this was really, really great, great cigar. I mean, I could I could smoke this cigar all day and be incredibly happy with it. Um, yeah. I felt like it had a really well-rounded sweetness, uh, and it had spice to combat that sweetness, um, and it had bitterness. It had just a retro of that you know, pronounced by pepper and that breadiness, it was fantastic. Um, and, and the finish was great. I mean, before this, we know that Nick could blend a killer cigar using Agonorsa tobacco. Uh, and now he could create certainly a killer cigar using a uh, Connecticut shade. So, yeah. 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 Same with you. I, I was really interested in trying this um, cigar from foundation, um, you know, being Connecticut shade. And I don't think it disappointed. Um, 
it was for me it was more along the traditional Connecticut profile, uh, just slightly less bitterness. Um, there weren't any vegetal notes or anything like that, um, so I think that kind of keeps the profile a little bit more interesting to more smokers. Um, the creamy wood is typical, and and you know this was a good rendition of that. Um, and you know any anyone can smoke the cigar any time of day. I don't think it's going to be you know it's going to be kind of too much for anybody. Um, construction was fantastic. You know, and I could definitely see this being a, a really good cigar to smoke in the morning uh, paired with some coffee. Um, I just think that would be, you know, pretty much a fantastic pairing uh, to do to do with this. So getting into the scoring, uh, you gave this cigar a 7.40 and I gave it a 6.80. How do you think the uh, score matched up with your experience? So 7.4, is that what yeah. you said? 7.40? Yeah. Um, Actually, do you mind talking about your experience real quick? Because I want to look at our uh, our listing. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it matches well. I mean, uh, a 6.8 is a, good, a pretty good score. Um, and I think for a cigar with this price point um, and being a Connecticut shade, I mean, I, to me, I think there's a lot of Connecticut shades out there. But for for there to be uh, a good one, that's that's already you've accomplished something by just being by, by being a good one. Um, there's a lot of that are just kind of average or below average. Um, there's, you know, like I mentioned in my uh, kind of final thoughts is um, bitterness, vegetal notes, those kind of things. Sometimes that's off-putting to people. I, you know, I can, I can enjoy them in, in moderation. Um, but I, I, you know, I thought that, that I think that score is, is a good score. And I think it definitely um, matched up with my experience. Yeah. Um, so now that I pulled up our, uh, full listing of our, uh, all the cigar reviews that we've done so far. Um, mm -hmm. so I see that this is the highest score I've ever, ever given a Connecticut shade cigar, sure. uh, which makes sense. Um, but I am still going to go back and say the Southern draw ones that we did. Yep. Um, I, I, I still know that we smoked those two early. Yeah. Uh, because when I follow up after more humidor time, I mean, they're freaking fantastic. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I know I scored one of those higher than this. So, oh, okay. Um, and then, uh, and really on top of that, I mean, this is the best scoring quote unquote mouse cigar that I've ever given. Um, mm -hmm. so no, I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And especially you're looking at five bucks a stick for the one yep. of these. Yep. Um, it's fantastic. I mean, I, I go buy a box of these. And before I buy the box, uh, I, I want to see what the other Vitolas smoke like. Right. Um, and, and, you know, gauge it upon that. Uh, but the this Vitola was really good. I mean, um, we I only spoke one sample of this. Uh, yeah. We only got one sample of this at the show. Um, so, you know, I, you know I, was, uh, I wish that I'd smoke a few more to gauge consistency. Um, but, right. you know, I could certainly find out more about that through reading uh, what the other uh, media sites say about it. So, but based yeah. upon what you and I both said, I mean, because, sure, you know, consistency seems – it seems pretty good. It seems pretty yeah. consistent. So, yeah. so one thing I wanted to bring up was one of the things I was interested to see when I I learned more details about the cigar was um, since it was coming out of AJ's factory, <clears throat> and it kind of ties in with the Southern Draw because the Southern Draw comes out of the AJ factory as well. I was kind of curious how these two cigars were going to be different. So I know I'm pretty sure the Southern Draw has an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper rather than a U.S. Mm -hmm. So I was in, you know, this one has a Sumatra binder. So there's the, the blend is different, but I was just kind of just curious. It was, you know, two two Connecticut's coming out of the same factory in a fairly short time frame. Um, what was going to be, you know, and and they're, the cigars are very different from each other. Um, but the other thing that's similar yeah. about them is is the low price point. And I and I'll throw in the uh, Illusione Rothschild, not the necessarily saying the Connecticut one yet because we haven't smoked it, but just the original Rothschild. It's in the same price point. Uh, mm -hmm. similar Vitola format. So like I'm almost thinking that these three cigars are going to be like, you know, it's a really good time if that Illusione Connecticut smokes, you know, close to as good as the original did. Um, mm -hmm. If it does, do you have like a trifecta of small Vitola Connecticut shades that you could just go to town on, man. If you're a Connecticut yeah. smoker, these three would – you know, you think after those three would have to just kind of be like really filling up your rotation at that point. No, I, I totally agree. That's a great point you give. I mean, I even talking about the ones that we have smoked already, which is the Southern Draw, uh, the the Quick Draw Connecticut's, as well as this this uh, this Turtle Oak one. 
I mean, I feel like within this one, if, if memory serves me right, because it's been a while since I smoked the Southern Draw ones, uh, I felt like the Charter Oak stuff was uh, definitely amped up both in strength as well as spice levels. Mm -hmm. Right. But to me, those are – it's almost like the perfect balance of it. Um, so even if you're looking at, let's say, the three of them battling out for, you know, the, the king of the Rothschild, Connecticut Shades. Right. Um, they're different enough within these two anyways mm -hmm. uh, that you can enjoy still throughout the entire day. And, and yeah, I yeah. love about it. So. Yeah, it's the thing is they're not they're not the same. So you can, if you wanted to, you're just having a smoking day, and you wanted to, you're, you know you wanted to be on that mild to medium range, you know, you got three cigars lined up that you can just kind of knock out of the park with. So, right. Yep. Any no, other this thoughts? is a winner for sure. Yeah. Any other no, thoughts? This is. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it is well with people uh, buying blindly and trying, uh, mm -hmm. especially even if you're not a Connecticut shade. Uh, some of that likes Connecticut shade cigars. Mm -hmm. I think this has enough of a kick for you to still get that, you know, spice and nicotine effects that you want, perhaps. Right, right, so. right. All right. Well, that wraps it up for this review. Uh, thanks for watching us. Uh, if you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to check out the full written review on the website, developingpilots.com. Uh, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, follow us on all the social media channels, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google+. And uh, thank you for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.